In this episode, we're going to talk about more of the raddest rides from the world of 80s action figures. So, stick around. and dorkettes and welcome to nostalgia syndrome my name is rob and in this episode we are doing our 17th installment of the raddest rides in 80s action figures now this episode will have a little bit of everything for everybody at least i hope it has a very heavy smattering of fantasy vehicles and i'm pretty excited to dive in so here we go with rad ride number one this prehistoric vehicle comes from Kenner's 1988 toy line, The Bone Age. This is the Club Flinger. Right off the top, this artwork on the box is awesome. What we see here is a large skull with a little grizzly caveman dude like piloting it. And it is flinging a large stone club. Of course, the box says it's a club, hence club flinger, but it looks very much like a stone axe. So I don't know if they went with club because it's less violent sounding. I don't know. Anyway, when we take a look at the back of the box, we get an awesome little backstory on the club flinger. So allow me to read that. Imagine this bone age weapon. Cavemen unearth a brontosaurus skull to build the club flinger. They chiseled a rock club head from a boulder of rose quartz and wedged it into a dead branch, lashing giant tusks together with vines from a cycad tree. I guess that's how you pronounce it. The clan constructed a giant lever that hurls the club into battle. I mean, <laughs> that is awesome. Did Kenner need to go that little extra? They didn't. I mean, this thing, just from sight alone, would sell this toy. But, like I said, they went just that little bit more, and that makes it just truly excellent. They did a tremendous job with giving it a backstory when they didn't need to. Anyway, we have some play-by-play -play action of Hurl's giant stone club at enemies. And... One of the features of the Bone Age toys was that you could take the skeletal dinosaurs apart and rebuild them in different and monstrous ways. So the second picture shows the club flinger connects to dinosaur bones to create unique prehistoric weapons. So they kind of created like a spoiler or something on the back of here. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, like a lot of these vehicles, figures are sold separately. These tiny little cavemen are of the scale of like Kenner's mask figures and Tycho's Dino Rider figures. And when you think about it, Dino Rider's Bone Age, it's kind of a before and after of prehistoric beasts. That'd be pretty cool. That would be a great playtime universe of having the skeletal remains of the dinosaurs fighting the technologically advanced dinosaurs of the Dino Riders. That'd be pretty cool. Either way, I didn't have either of them, but now I'm super excited for the idea of a huge prehistoric war between these two toy lines. Our second rad ride comes to us all the way from the other world. This is Antor the Stinger, released by Arco in 1983. Now, the fantasy toy line known as The Other World had two standout features. One was that all the action figures were bendy, instead of having posable joints. 
The second feature was that all the weapons were glow-in-the-dark. And in 1983, glow-in-the-dark technology was something we could not get enough of. Now, Antor the Stinger is a really cool insect-looking mount. He comes with four bendy arms in the front, and he stands on two in the back. He has kind of floppy wings, but a saddle is included, so your bendy action figures can ride him. Now, Antor came with two action figures. You had this awesome two-headed gentleman known as Schizo, and he came with a little PVC sidekick that are known as Mogs. And Schizo would not be complete without a few glow-in-the-dark weapons thrown in for good measure. Now, I was only lucky enough to have one of the other world figures, but that one figure was enough to create a legacy of nostalgia that I would love to get my hands on some of the other ones. Antor the Stinger is definitely one that I would love to add to my collection. I mean, the other world figures were four inch in scale, so anyone could be chilling on the back of Antor. I mean, your G.I. Joe figures, I mean, slap a Cobra Law Enforcer on the back of this dude and you have something that kind of makes sense. In keeping with the insect theme, we go to our third Radical Ride. And it might be a stretch, but it fits the criteria that I set forth in being that this vehicle needs to either have a driver or rider figure. And it definitely does accommodate actually two figures. This comes from the Glow Friends toy line released by Play School in 1982 and this is the Glow Dragonfly. Now I think this dragonfly looks totally awesome. I love his little like navigator cap and the colors just pop but there were two different versions released and I don't understand it because if you're going to slap glow on the box it needs to glow. But unfortunately, there was only one version that had glow-in-the-dark legs. The other did not. I would hate to be the kid that ended up with the second version and had no glow-in-the-dark features at all. Now, Glow Dragonfly came with one of the Glow Friend figures, which were little, hollow, slightly squishy figures that glowed in the dark. It came with one called Shuttlebug. And he's one of the cutest insects you will ever see. Just like Glow Dragonfly, I think it is a great yin yang compared to Antor. Both fly, one's ugly, one's cute. Anyway, I remember all the Glow friends being on the toy shelves. I think they had a cartoon, but I remember they were everywhere. And they were all spawned by Glow Worm, which was a little plush worm dude with a vinyl head that when you squeeze the body, his head would light up. I mean, very simple, very cool, never had one, but like I said, I remember them being very popular and on the shelves. Our fifth and final Radical Ride comes from a toy line that had tons of potential, but unfortunately, it didn't really go anywhere. This is The Visionaries that was released by Hasbro in 1987, and the vehicle is the Skyclaw. This was a vehicle for the Darkling Lords, which were the bad guys of the toy line and cartoon. And if you don't know anything about The Visionaries, they had awesome holographic features. The action figures had a chest plate with a hologram that was a totem of sorts, that the animal or creature on their chest was what gave them powers that matched that creature or animal. The vehicles were the same, as the Skyclaw, when its wings, had two different holograms. You had a dragon on one side and a hawk-type creature on the other. Now this vehicle accommodated a pilot and a co-pilot, and it had a feature where its nose would kind of shoot out and destroy whatever was in its path. Now, speaking of the pilot, it came with a character named Mordred, and his totem was that of a beetle. So I assume he would, you know, like hawk out and get armor and maybe strength of a beetle. That would be awesome. But great figure. I love the colors. I mean, the purple, awesome. The teal-like highlights, super awesome. 
Now, like I said, this action figure line didn't really go anywhere. And I feel like Hasbro at the time was kind of floundering, trying to find their next big thing. I mean, between this and Cops, which were both solid and great action figures, I mean, they didn't really garner the popularity that I think they deserved. I mean, these were a bigger scale figure that were totally posable like that of a G.I. Joe figure. So, I mean, maybe it was a price point that turned a lot of people off, but I mean, even the added fact of holograms, I mean, holograms were such a big deal in the 80s. Everything from stickers to toys like the Visionaries. Anyway, I would love to get my hands on some Visionary figures. Unfortunately, I never got any as a kid, but getting the Skyclaw with Mordred would be a great place to start. Okay, folks, that was a look at five more of the raddest rides in 80s action figures. And like I said, a little bit of everything, but a very heavy smattering of fantasy. I mean, you could even say the Glow Friends Glow Dragonfly is fantasy. I mean, it definitely is. Just not the way you're thinking. Anyway, as you can see, I have a black hat on. It's not the black hat, but it's a substitute that I picked up on Amazon. And we'll see how it goes. So far, it's super hot under these lights. So, apparently it's a lot more insulated than my old beat-up hat that I got back in 1995. But... We'll see. I mean, I haven't taken it outside yet because I'm scared to lose it. So I might just put it to the side and keep it for filming. Anyway, I know that's silly, but I'm just filling you in on the ins and outs of the laundry room. I hope you enjoyed this look at five more of the raddest rides from 80s action figures. If you did like it, give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending, down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you will be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thank you for watching. Keep being rad and stay dorky.